Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to You've Got Word, where we use biblical principles to answer some of the most provocative and challenging issues that you and I face on a day to day basis. I'm Dexter Lawrence, and today we, we want to be talking about the issue of porn. And we're going to be asking and answering the question is it really that bad? Is porn really that bad? So let's go. So as we said, we're going to be discussing the issue of porn. And as we dive in today, let's answer this question. What is the meaning of the word porn? Porn is short for pornography, sexually illicit videos, photos, writings, and etc. It is produced to elicit uh, sexual arousal. That's what dictionary.com says. Its goal, the goal of, of porn, is to establish sexual arousal via external stimuli. One of the things that we always must do is to seek the mind of God concerning any and everything that we face. And we discover the mind of God by going to scripture. So before we get to that point, let's answer this question. What does the carnal world or the non-Christian world say about porn? First of all, statistics will show that porn globally brings in around $12 billion every year. That's more money than some small countries earn on a yearly basis. It's more money than some small countries need on a yearly basis to run their business. Some say a little porn now and then is not bad. It's okay. Some people say that uh, when they consume it, I'm not hurting anyone. It's just me and I'm just doing my thing. Some say, what's the big deal? It's all over the place. Everybody knows about it. So what's the big deal? Some say you can watch it to get ideas for marital sex. Some say I'm old enough. I can handle this thing. But little do you know, that's some of what, you know, the carnal mind is saying about porn. But let's get into some of the negative side effects of porn. Firstly, porn damages our ability to develop the skill of learning to wait. It teaches us to instantaneously seek gratification. Most times it is to get it yourself. And of course, you know that that's a distortion of the whole sexual process. Porn can hamper, even destroy, our ability to mentally be pure from a sexual standpoint. So that when you look at a woman or look at a man, all you're doing is undressing the person and all you're seeing is, you know, how they can work with you on a sexual level. That's really, that's really bad. Porn can cause intimacy problems in marriage um, where you're not being satisfied by your spouse's appearance. And as a result, you're not being uh, sexually stimulated to be with your spouse because this image of this man or this woman um, is in your head and you, you're you unable to be sexually attractive to your spouse or feel a sexual attraction towards your spouse anymore. Porn can distort our perception of love and sex. Most of the times you would find that persons who have been abused sexually and haven't gotten uh, the kind of counseling and healing and deliverance that they need uh, identify love and sex as one as the same. And so they feel that uh, at times if they are sexually active with a person, then they are basically projecting love on that person or that person is projecting love for me but love is so much more than sex you can write that in the comments love is so much more than sex all right so let's get to the meat of the substance what is the biblical position on porn the first and major sin that is committed when a person partakes of porn is the sin of lust Matthew chapter 5 and verse 28 says this, But I tell you, anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And please, 
please ladies don't 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 feel that this has no reference to you because i know that women do these things as well the reality is that most of porn is partaken of via what we see so the whole point is what we see and what we read and the image that is projected on our hearts and our minds um, when we see or we look at the content looking at porn is by willing action putting yourself in the position to crave for what you see or the end result of what you see is intending to produce so porn may intend to satisfy you by what you see and porn may also intend to satisfy you by um you know, the end result of the action. The person watching porn is either guilty, according to scripture, guilty of adultery or guilty of fornication. There's no two ways about it. Porn and the participation in illicit sexual behavior is a form of idolatry. Exodus chapter 20 and from verse 3, it says this, You shall have no other God before me, you shall not make for yourself any idol in the form of anything in heaven, above or earth beneath, and the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. God does not want to share the spotlight in our hearts with sin. And we've got to understand that, that God must be sovereign. When you know the standard for God's standard for sexual purity, and then you partake of porn, we are in doing that, we are exalting the porn rather than exalting God. And here's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, reading from verse 18. This is why I say to run from sex sin. No other sin affects the body as this one does. When you sin this sin, it is against your own body. Haven't you yet learned that your body is the home of the Holy Spirit God gave you and that he lives within you? Your body does not belong to you for God has bought you with a great price. So use every part of your body to give glory to God because he owns it. Check this out, friends. Partaking in porn is a sin against your own body. I understand it this way. It's like playing a trick on your body, making it think that it is positioned for sexual intimacy. And in truth, it is presented with a fake reality. Participating in porn also is an exaltation of passion and pleasure rather than an exaltation of the divine standard for arriving at sexual fulfillment. So the Bible is clear. Let's talk now on some reasons why you should avoid porn. Firstly, the Bible says that we should run from sexual sin. That's right. Don't play around with it. Don't mess around with it. Run from it. I don't know about you, but I understand what run means. Run means to run. So you run as fast as you can. You might be heavy, you might be light, but run from sexual sin, uh, any form of it, just run from it. God in the person of the Holy Spirit lives in the believer. My thing is the highest form of disrespect or insult that someone can pay to someone is to disrespect them in their own home. We must maintain the highest level of honor for God. He lives on the inside of us. One of the things that we've got to bear in mind is that we don't belong to ourselves. We are God's self ownership leads to the idea that we can self determine ourselves. And that's crazy. When you take hold of the reality of God ownership, it lays upon you, the individual, a responsibility that you must maintain the order that God sets. If I belong to myself, then I can do what I want. But if I believe according to scripture that I belong to God, then I must seek with all that is within me 
to maintain the order and standard that would please God. So let's get to the point of surrender. Check this out. Every part of our bodies belong to the Lord. Every part of your body and my body, it belongs to God. On a daily basis, we need to surrender those areas of our lives to God. We need to, to surrender our physical selves to God. We need to surrender our mental, emotional selves to God. We need to surrender our minds to God, asking him to purify our minds. And on a daily basis, we need to ask God to guide you and I sexually so that we don't walk into the valley of darkness as far as sex is concerned. The other thing that is so crucial, so important to this is that we've got to submit to the Bible as the compass for our daily living. Listen, friends, to answer the big question, the question that we had above, is porn really that bad? Yes, it is. You know why? Because it dishonors God. It's addictive and it is destructive to your personal self. Let me say that again. It dishonors God. It's addictive and it's a, it's destructive to your own self, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. It's like self-abuse. But there is hope and there is deliverance. You and I, we can break free from every bondage by holding on to scripture and making it the truth of our lives. And we can also depend upon the spirit of God to give us the strength that we need every day to rise above what is evil. So that's it for our little talk today. Before we leave, I want to encourage you to like this video. Liking the video is so powerful. When you like the video, uh, what YouTube does is spreads it all over the place. It just, it just puts some love on it when you like it. So the algorithm that they created for YouTube, it, it sees the love that you give to the video by the like, the thumbs up that you put, and it spreads the video all over the place. Also, I'm trying to build a community of people that are interested in the mind of God, the biblical mind of God in responding to the challenges of life. So I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe on a daily basis or whenever I upload videos, you are going to be notified that, you know, I've produced a new content and it's available for your viewing. Share the channel with someone, share this video with someone, and let's rise to the place where God gets the glory from our lives. Until we meet again, remember, biblical truth matters. Let's talk some truth, man, in Jesus' name.